Hey everybody, how you doing today? Hope you had a good first week. Um, I'm going to do a quick overview here of week two for you. Um, I am not doing so well myself. Turns out we got COVID last week, uh, so I've been in bed for several days. Um, just finally getting a little bit up and about today. Um, hoping I'll start feeling better soon. Um, it's not quite as bad as the first time we got it in 2020, but it's it's no fun. So uh, the chapter two lecture video is from last summer. Uh, so apologies for that. Um, but same content um, should be good here. It'll talk about the lab exercise we're going to work on. Um, we're just going to do it in the discussion here, and then we have a chapter two quiz, and then we have the first project. We do need a little bit from next week to finish this project out. But remember, this one's not due for two more weeks, so we've got some time here uh, to work on this one. So you can get started on it, and we'll go there. So um, yeah, check out Chapter 2. You can also watch Dr. Chuck's videos on Chapter 2 as well. I'll put that link um, in here for you as well. Um, for the lab, we again, your first post got to be in by next Sunday, 11.59 p.m. Ideally, you get the second post in by then as well. But if you need a little bit more time, you know, we've got the whole next week for that as well, because I don't know when folks uh, have a chance to work on this. So uh, we're going to do a little practice program that asks them to enter their name, hourly wage, and hours worked this week, and we'll print a pretend pay stub for them. We'll have their name, their weekly salary before taxes, the taxes, we're just going to estimate 10% because that makes life easy for us, and their net salary. And then what you're going to do for your reply is test a classmate's code. So pick some numbers that you know what the results for those values should be. So, hey, if my weekly salary, um, I'm sorry, if my hourly wage is $15 an hour and I worked 10 hours, I know 15 times 10 should be 150. 150 minus 10%, right? That's $15 for, for taxes. So the net salary should be $135. So pick some numbers, test it, and then you're going to copy paste the output of running that program on a partner's thread or a classmate's thread here. Um, feel free to work together on these labs again. These are meant for you to practice the things that we've talked about this week to make sure that you got some of it down in your head before you start working on some of the harder stuff. Um, the chapter two quiz, um, I read, write these questions, so they should come out of the lecture and the material from the text. If you've got questions about the questions, let me know because someone else probably has the same question as you. And then on for project one. So there's a GitHub repository like we did for our practice. So you're going to clone the repository. That it makes a copy of the folder in your computer. You're going to start a PyCharm project in that folder. Um, in, you're going to use the existing sources to use that main PY file. You'll write your code, and then you'll be able to commit the code in the GitHub desktop client. And you'll be able to push the code to GitHub.com. You can go to GitHub.com and view your code, and then you'll turn in that URL. So seeing it on GitHub.com is your last like sanity check, because if you can see it on GitHub.com, I'll be able to see it on GitHub.com, and I'll be able to score it for you. Um, and you can commit and push as often as you like. You don't have to wait until it's done. In fact, I encourage you to commit often and early because that way, if something terrible happens to your computer, you still have a copy of your code out in the cloud. And GitHub is pretty good at keeping your code around. They're probably not going to lose that copy. So it's really handy to have a copy of your code out in the cloud. So some people like to commit every time they get over the computer. Some people like to commit every hour. Some people like to commit every time they have a little bit of program working. However you want to do it, it's great. Just commit early and often. Um, it'll help save you some time. So we're building a fence here. And um, when, I, when I say fence, I mean like a horse fence. So this idea that the posts... And you put it as like the big posts here. Let me like let me just look up horse fence. Here we go. I think I've searched this before. Um, horse wood fence. There we go. A wood fence. Something like this, right? This is very similar to my neighbor's fence, actually. So there's posts every so often, and then there are boards that run across the posts. So the idea here is you need to buy a long enough board that'll fit across the posts, and maybe it'll fit across more than one post, depending on how it is. But we're not going to have boards ending in the middle here because it's tricky to kind of join those two boards together. Um, not that it's not impossible, because it's just wood. Uh, and you can do a lot of things with nails. But we want to have boards running from post to post evenly. Um, so the idea here is we ask them the length and the width of their fenced area, how far they want they, their posts to be. When we get to week three, we'll be able to figure out if that is evenly divisible by the post distance. So if my width, width is 10 and I want my posts every three feet, you can't put a post every three feet if your width is 10. Right, that's the idea there. And then we'll figure out how many posts we need to buy. We'll tell the ask the user how long of a board they want to buy. So, hey, you're going to Home Depot. What length board are you going to buy? Well, maybe the six-foot boards are on sale that week. And if my posts are every three feet, a six-foot board is great. Maybe the 10-foot boards are on sale, and I have posts every three feet. 
well, sure, I can get three posts worth of boards out of a 10-foot board, right? Um, so that idea, and then we'll check again from week three if the board length is less than the post distance, tell them they need to buy longer boards, calculate the number of boards needed, and then we'll ask them how many boards we want to run across each post. So, right, you probably don't just have one board, so in that picture of the fence, right, I think we had three. Um, oh, I lost it already. Where did they go? There it is. Yeah, one, two, three. So however that is, then ask them how much each post costs, how much each board costs, the total number of posts required, the total number of boards required, and the total cost for each po boards and posts, and then the grand total for the project. And that's our very first project. So this is due in two weeks. So we'll get started on early. Um, we, these last couple checks that we're going to do, we'll talk about in week three. Um, hope you have fun watching last semester's video or last year's video. If you got any questions or concerns, reach out. And I'll talk to you folks later. Take care.